Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeff and James Abraham. I'm a research assistant at the Center for Advanced Materials, Qatar University. Today, I'm here to deliver an oral presentation on the topic Na2-X, LIX, FEP207, where X is 0 and 0 0.6, hybrid cathodes for energy storage applications. The following is my table of contents. I'm going to first introduce the topic of batteries and then I'm going to uh, move on to the aim of my work then I'm going to talk about the methodology of higher power group synthesizes material then I'm going to talk about the structural thermal characterization of this material and then I'm going to talk about the electrochemical performance of this material and then I'm going to conclude on this topic to understand the working principle of a battery I'll now play a video when a battery is discharging the sodium or lithium present in the negative electrode anode side moves to the positive electrode the cathode side and similarly when the battery is charged the ions move from positive electrode the cathode to the negative electrode anode and loads it with the lithium or sodium ions this is the general principle of how a battery works moving on to the applications of batteries mm. Currently, the main market for lithium-ion batteries are as rechargeable batteries in small-scale applications like laptops, phones, and other portable devices. Also, there has been an increase of use of batteries in electric vehicle applications like Tesla and Toyota. There has been also a market for grid storage applications. However, it needs much more development. However, for these applications, there is a requirement for both high energy density and high power density, which the current lithium ion battery technology lacks. Batteries deliver low power density but have high energy density, and comparatively, the internal combustion engines show both power, high power density and high energy density. However, the battery tech is more environmentally friendly than the internal combustion engines. There have been other battery technologies like the lead acid battery, nickel cadmium battery, but the lithium ion batteries have dominated the market throughout the past years. There is however an increasing problem of price of the lithium ion battery as the current lithium reserves are mainly inaccessible due to some geopolitical factors. Hence, the prices of lithium salts for synthesis have increased rapidly. This figure shows the price difference between the lithium carbonate and sodium carbonate, both salts that are used for the synthesis of the cathode material and their price differences. As you can see, there is the price of the sodium is 30 times cheaper than that of the lithium salt. In terms of materials used in sodium ion batteries, the following figure shows both the cathode and the anodes used in the sodium ion batteries. Most of the cathodes are polyionic compounds as well as oxides, both the layered O3 and layered P2. In this, our material we are going to discuss on is Na2-FeP207 and we are going to try lithium substitution on it. On the anode side, there is carbonaceous material, car, uh, materials that have carbon in it, non graphitic carbon, uh, graphene, and then there is also metal oxides and metal, metal sulfides. There have also been organic anodes and metal alloy anodes. However, the metal alloy anodes are more recent as compared to both carbonaceous and the metal oxide and metal sulfide anodes. Even though the sodium ion battery technology shows promising results, it has its own challenges as well. One of them is lower operating voltage. Comparatively to the lithium ion which operates at 4.9 volts, the sodium ion battery technology has a lower operating voltage. It shows inferior reversible capacity and lower energy density as compared to lithium ion batteries as well. And one of the other main reasons is it requires high temperature for optimal work this is this causes a lot of safety issues 
lifespan issues and cost issues. What we are aiming for are batteries that have high specific energy, high specific perform performance and high specific power. Towards addressing the challenges of the sodium ion battery, various groups have reported different solutions for this problem, a few of which have been listed here. Dimension reduction which decreases the diffusion distance of the ions. Composite formation where conductive materials like graphene and carbon nanotubes are used to enhance conductivity. Doping where trace amounts of transition metals are used to improve the chemistry, the chemical and thermal stability. Morphology control to improve structural stability. Coatings to protect from electrolyte, electrode in contact and to prevent unwanted side reactions. And finally, electrolyte modification to form protective passivation layer on the electrodes. As a solution to address one of the problems of the sodium ion battery challenges, we proposed use of lithium substitution. The lithium substitution has been previously promoted by many groups, uh, wherein small trace amounts of lithium is substituted instead of sodium in the alkali metal layer. Here, this figure shows the dual stabilization of effect of lithium addition in O3 type sodium based oxide cathodes. The reported work shows that there is a bulk stabilization where the crystal structure of the material is stabilized during charge and discharge with the presence of lithium. And also, there is interface stabilization where the lithium protects the cathode from unwanted reactions occurring between the electrolyte and the cathode surface. However, it is necessary to note that lithium substitution has not been reported in polyionic compounds such as Na2-FEP207. In terms of methodology for synthesizing the lithium substituted py pyrophosphate material, we followed the solid state synthesis approach where the reactants as, you, as seen from these chemical equations were weighed and then mixed with a ball milling technique then the powder resulting powder was pelleted and then run in an argon tube furnace to obtain the phase pure Na2-FEP2 as in baseline material as well as the lithium substituted portion of this material. Moving on to the structure and thermal and electrochemical characterization. With regards to the XRD spectra of the synthesized Na2-FEP207 baseline material and the lithium substituted material, it matches with the reported database spectra of Na2-FEP207. In the spectra of the lithium substituted sample, there is presence of Li2-FEP27 phase as seen from the two sharp peaks observed at 25 degrees and 35 degrees. Figure B of shows the crystal structure of the reported Na2-FEP207 material and figure C shows the proposed crystal structure of the lithium substituted sample where the lithium substitute sodium in the alkali layer. Further structural characterization techniques included the same analysis of the synthesized Na2-FEP207 material and the lithium substituted material and their carbon coating variants. The only observation in the SEM is the decrease in particle size due to the carbon coating using ball milling technique. Thermal characterization of the materials included TG analysis. Here the lithium substituted material shows higher thermal stability than the baseline sample which is an important factor for the next generation sodium ion batteries. Moving on to the electrochemical characterization of the materials, the following figure is the galvanostatic charge discharge curves tested for both the baseline and lithium substituted material. The materials were tested in both the sodium cell which has the sodium metal as anode and lithium cell which has the lithium metal as the anode. The baseline material shows stable performance at all C rates in the sodium cell. However, in the lithium cell, due to the formation of the solid electrolyte interface, which obstructs the lithium ion and causes lower diffusion, the performance is lower. In the case of the lithium substituted sample, the overall performance is lower for all cells compared to that of the baseline material. This is as a factor of lithium substitution, which has caused crystal structure imbalance 
due to the lithium having lower ionic radii than sodium. Rapid capacity fade is also observed at all C rates as a result of incomplete lithium substitution which either impedes the sodium ions in sodium cell or lithium ions in the lithium cell. The following figures represent the rate capability data and the cycling data of the Na2 FEP207 baseline material and the lithium substituted material. In the rate capability data, the baseline material shows stable capacities at all C rates up to 4C. It is necessary to note that the lithium cell of the baseline material outperforms the sodium cell at 0.05C and 0.1C rate. However, at higher C rates, the performance of the lithium cell rapidly fades. Comparatively, in the lithium substituted material, both sodium cell and lithium cell show reasonable capacity values at all C rates and stability up to 4 C rate. From the cycling data, the sodium cell of the baseline material shows capacity fade after 50 cycles at 0.5 C. It can be also noted from the columbic efficiency curve of the degradation of the capacity in the baseline material. Comparatively, the lithium cell of the baseline material and both cells of the lithium substituted material show cyclic stability up to 50 cycles with no relevant capacity fade. From both RC and cycling data, it can be noticed that the lithium substituted material is electrochemically active in both sodium cell and lithium cell. The GITT curves and the CV curves of the baseline material and the lithium substituent material are represented in the following figures. The GITT curve of the sodium cell of the baseline material displays no polarization from the range 2 volt to 3.25 volt due to efficient and comfortable sodium ion deintercalation from the host structure and from 3.25 volt to 4.5 volt this material displays high polarization due to slower sodium ion intercalation process. The lithium cell of the baseline material displays similar polarization trend as the sodium cell. Comparatively, in the lithium substituent material, there is an overall uh, general trend of high polarization. Initially, there is a trend of low polarization suggesting easy diffusion of sodium and lithium ions at lower voltages. However, with increasing voltages, there is higher polarization suggesting sluggish sodium or lithium ion diffusion. From CV curves of the baseline material, the sodium cell, four distinct peaks are, can be observed relating with sodium ion removal from different sodium sites available in the structure which are operated at various activation energies and voltages. In the lithium cell of the baseline material, two broad peaks at 3.1 and 3.6 volt are observed. The lack of lithium in the host structure results in broad peaks compared to that of the sodium cell. In the lithium substituted sample, similar CV curves are observed as the baseline material. Sodium shell shows three peaks at 2.6 volt, 3.2 volt and 3.3 volt related with the sodium extraction and in the lithium cell two peaks are observed in relation with the lithium extraction. However, it is necessary to note that compared to the lithium cell of the baseline material, the lithium cell of the lithium substituted material shows sharper curves as there is presence of lithium in the host structure. In summary, I discussed the synthesis process of the baseline material and its lithium substituent variant using the solid state synthesis technique. Through structural characterization like XRD spectra and SEM imaging, there is confirmation of phase pure material synthesis. The lithium substituted material is shown to have better thermal stability than the baseline Na2 FEP207 material. And this is confirmed through the 3GA results. And finally, although there is no improvement in the electrochemical performance of this material, it is proved that the lithium substitution material is electrochemically active in both sodium and lithium cells with sufficient cycling stability. With this material as a reference, new lithium substituted fire phosphate materials are a possibility for the future energy storage applications. As the presenter, I would like to acknowledge the financial support from the Qatar National Research Fund grant NPRP 11S and also the Qatar University internal grant funding which supported this study. I would also like to acknowledge all co-authors and especially Dr. Abdul Shakur for his supervision throughout the entire study. 
Thank you and please feel free to contact me if you have any questions regarding this presentation.